Grid is more versatile than stack layout, giving you two dimensions to work with, rows and columns. It also makes it easy to align views across different rows, something very tricky to do with nested stack layouts. Grid's rows and columns can be very flexible. Each row or column can be a different size, the rows and columns can automatically adapt to the size of the children placed inside it, and children can occupy a single cell or span many cells. This flexibility makes it a good choice for the root layout panel on many apps. Getting a grid to look the way you want requires a bit of setup. You don't want to just say, I want three rows and two columns. Instead, you define each row and each column individually. This lets you specify the height of each row and the width of each column. There are three options for sizing. The simplest one is a fixed size. This option has the disadvantage that it doesn't adjust if the size of the children or the size of your grid changes. Next, there's auto, which means it automatically adjusts to the size of the largest child. Finally, there's proportional spacing. You can say things like share equally or split the space one-third and two-third, etc. These concepts apply identically to both rows and columns. The row definition class defines a single row. For rows, you need to set the height. The column definition class defines a single column. For columns, you set the width. Notice that the width and height properties are not numeric values. It's more complex than that because it needs to capture the three different options we just talked about, fixed size, automatic size, and proportional size. The grid length class is used to define a row height or column width and has two properties. Let's first look at grid unit type. This is how you specify whether you want fixed size and automatically adjusting size or that proportional size. The value is a number used with fixed and proportional sizing. Let's look at some examples. Here we want to create a fixed size grid length. In code, we'd use the grid length constructor taking a numeric value. The constructor will set grid unit type to absolute for you. In XAML, we just give a numeric value, and the XAML parser will invoke the type converter to create the grid length instance. Next is auto sizing. This means the grid will scan all the children in that row or column, select the largest, and make the size exactly big enough to fit that view. If you're creating this in code, you use the grid unit type of auto. The numeric value you supply is ignored, and you should set it to 1 as we show here. In XAML, you simply use auto as the row height or the column width. The last one is proportional sizing, officially called star sizing. It means that the size will be determined by the available space and the proportion each row or column asks for. Let's use rows as an example. To determine the available space, the grid scans all the rows not using star sizing and adds up their heights. The difference between this height and the grid's overall height is then divided amongst all star size rows based on their value setting. To create a star size grid length in code, you use the constructor taking a value and grid unit type, passing in the star type. In XAML, you use the value followed by the star symbol. For star sizing, the grid length value is a multiplier determining the ratio of shared space between all these star rows. For example, if we have two star size rows, both with a 1 as the multiplier, they'll share the available space equally. But if one of them had 2 as the number, it would get 2 times the space as the others. The value is a double, so you can also pass in 0.5 and get half the space as well. These two declarations are identical because they both create the same star value ratio. Note that for the one star value, the one is totally optional. The grid class has two collections, one for column definitions and one for row definitions. You can create these column and row definition objects and add them to the collection in code or in XAML. This process determines the shape of your grid. Let's look at an example of creating a mixture of different size rows. Columns will be analogous, except you'd set the width. We'll use XAML in this case since it's more concise. Our first row will be a fixed height of 100. The next row will be auto-sized. This row has two children. The second one is taller, meaning the row will match the height of that second child. And last, you have two rows that are star-sized. The first one gets one-third of the remaining space, and the second one gets two-thirds. Rows and columns both default to star size with a value of 1. If you create all your rows and columns using these defaults, you end up with just a uniform grid. All the rows will be the same height, and all the columns will be the same width.